All right, welcome back everyone. Um, got a little story for you. I actually shot this whole video segment last night uh, and then as I went into the editing process I realized that this white plastic dirling material uh, was glowing so bright from the <clears throat> lighting in my camera that the video footage is really unusable. It it just you couldn't see any of the cuts because of the glow coming off of it. So I'm shooting it again here. Uh, I've opted not to run the soft lighting. Uh, we'll just do it with our ambient lighting going on. Um, anyways, what I was building was on my swing arm, there's a chain guide. And part of that chain guide on the 78YZ is uh, has an upper roller. And as you can see, it's very worn out. The internal is this little uh, threaded bushing, basically. It's got a six mil thread in each end, and it goes into the plastic, but it's so worn out from years of use, and this is all worn out. So I found this uh, plastic material, I believe it's Durling or possibly uh, UHMW, but uh, so I had cut these last night. Uh, all I have left to do is the final sizing of the hole. Um, last night I was too lazy to go out to the other shop and get my nominal drill bit set. Um, the, the larger ones, I have some sets in here, but uh, what I need is a uh, 1532 drill bit. So I've got that uh, up in the Jacob's Chuck here now, uh, mounted in my tailstock, and I'll just run that in right now, and uh, we'll finish off that hole. And just that easy, we're done. So uh, I'll just uh, deburr this edge here a little bit, and I'll just use my actually my actual deburring tool. I'm not gonna, you know, set up with another cutter. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this out of here. Thought I'd actually show you this uh, little deburring tool because even if you're not a machinist at all, these tools are so incredibly handy. Now this one here is a, a little bit more money because it uh, has these replaceable tips and you know it stores in the handle, the end screws off. Um, but you can buy a regular one of these, uh, the cheap ones, you know, pen style with the little swivel end uh, from anywhere from six to ten dollars Canadian. Uh, they are very cheap, but they're so incredibly handy, and I'll just show you how they work. You just set that in there, and it just cuts the burr out of it. And then you have a nice chamfered deburred edge. Now, the practical use for these is if you're just, you know, cutting off some tubing or something on your home shop bench. Um, you can clean up the inside, especially if you want to have another piece that slides into it. Uh, say working on your vintage bikes or something. A lot of that uh, reproduction plastic comes non-drilled, so you got to drill the holes. And then it's nice to have a tool like this just to clean up that nasty plastic burr that you get from the, the drilling process. So that's why these are so incredibly handy and everybody should have one in their toolbox. I'm just going to show you the the fit up now on this. So it's just nice, little tiny bit of play, rolls very nice and smooth. Uh, we just grease that when we put it back together. And also, you see it sticks out proud a little bit, the bushing on both sides. There are two thrust washers that go on to keep that centered. And uh, this is 24 millimeters. I'll just uh, clean this outside up. This particular product that I am using is just about one millimeter smaller than the original product here. So I didn't obviously need to take any down uh, because it's gonna work out perfect the way it is. So that's why I don't have a real clean finish on that, but I'll just, I'll just buff that clean with a little bit of crocus cloth and we'll be good to go. So next up on the uh, machining process, will be, there's two of these rollers on the frame of the 78YZ. 
uh, one below the chain and one above the chain. And the only replacements you can get nowadays are these uh, moose racing type ones. Uh, there's other companies that sell them. And what the difference is, is on this old original model, sorry, I should have had that unthreaded already. Um, this shouldered collar fits right into the frame and you know it's got this uh, shaft that passes through it and it doesn't have a needle bearing in there it just ran solely on uh, just the plastic wear material these new ones actually do have uh, rubber seals and bearings inside them so there's a little bit of drag on this but it's simply because of the rubber seal um, then you also get with that uh, you know, a, a new bolt and washer that passes through that, the, the washer is to space it. Um, but what I have to do for this to fit into my frame is basically I just need to build this, this shoulder and collar. And I'll probably build those just out of aluminum. I don't need this whole long part. I just, I can part it off right back behind this shoulder and bore the hole through it so that instead of having threads in it like this one, I just have a, a full pass through for that eight millimeter bolt. Um, I'll probably make it out of aluminum too, just because uh, there's no real reason to for it to be steel and aluminum's lighter. So we always think we're coming ahead when we make stuff out of aluminum. So I'm just gonna carry on with that thought pattern and make it lighter. All right, so we've uh, chucked up a little piece of aluminum here in the lathe. And now we got to true it up, uh, face it off so we can uh, bore it and we'll cut it down to size. As you can see, the, the wobble on that, that was, uh, that piece was used in a completely different machine a while ago and uh, now we have to make it uh, work out for this one. So now we have to uh, true up the OD. So I am just hand feeding this at the moment. Um, I can't engage the power feed, but uh, I'm actually standing off to the side and not actually 100% able to see what I'm doing over there. So don't want to run the risk of running into the jaws on the chuck. Okay, so now we're basically around, so I'll actually engage the power feed here to do a cleanup pass. Okay, so now that we've uh, got our piece trued in the machine, I'll take my calipers, I'll take an OD measurement of that. I will then grab an OD measurement of this collar and this boss that goes into the frame. And I will turn this piece down now to the OD of that collar first. So I'll do that off camera and I'll come back with you as soon as I get that done. All right, so we've turned our OD of our material to the same size as the OD on the shoulder of our collar we're building. Um, I've started to cut down the actual collar portion here now. Um, so we need to turn this down to uh, 471 thou. Uh, that's what this measures here. And right now we're sitting at about 630 thou. So we're going to carry on with the cutting process.
So we're just gonna we're just gonna touch in and find where we were because I actually have been gone for a while and forgot where I was. So we're right there, and we will take a 20 foul cut. I don't have to do this several times. Okay, so I will just finish turning that to 471 thou, and I will come back with you. And the next process we'll do after that is boring our pass-through hole for our eight millimeter bolt. All right, our OD is cut to 471. And now we are going to bore through this. We need to use a 5 16 drill bit, which is my close enough, my closest drill bit to a uh, eight millimeter uh, bolt pass-through hole. So uh, I'm gonna carry on with that. I'm going to actually uh, take this out now and cut this off and then I'll just face the back side of it. Actually before I do that I will put a little chamfer on both of those surfaces and we'll just do that with our lead file. We go now I will cut that off and normally I would part that off with a part off tool for some reason on this small little lathe I haven't come up with the right combination of uh, part off tool I always get a, a really wicked chatter going on and uh, that could turn pretty dramatic if done wrong so I'm just gonna opt not to do that today I will just part this off with a hacksaw a little bit extra long flip it over and I'll face the back I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've just hacksawed it off. We're back in the lathe here. We're gonna face that off. Uh, we're gonna cut about 30, 40 thou off of that. And that will be one finished bushing. So I did have to move the camera there a little bit so you could actually see what I'm doing. So we're just back facing this off again. Took a little bit of an aggressive cut there, that's okay. I'll just back her off a little. And Start again. I uh, cut the flange off a little bit extra thick just because sometimes you know you don't get the best cut with your hacksaw. So ending up having to turn it down a little more than you normally would if you just actually use your part off tool. But like I said, I mean, I'm struggling with this uh, mini lathe a little bit. I've tried the upside down method as well as the standard and I've got about three different part off tools for it, but none of them are fantastic. I'm sure I'll sort it out here in a little bit. But, uh, on my other lathes, I don't have too much of an issue with that. But you can uh, 
you can end up breaking stuff in the lathe real easy when you're messing with part off tools. So okay, we'll just give that a little chamfer with the file here. And that is one bushing complete. I'll just remove it out of the chuck. Give it a little quick deburr with our little deburring tool. And there we have it. That is our little bushing that is going to replace that piece on the old unit. And now we can just run a bolt through it. Our eight millimeter thread fits through that just beautifully. Actually, I'm wrong. That's gonna sit that way. So we'll go through the frame, bolt will come in then our roller like this and our new washer and nut okay so I just finished my second little spacer bushing for my chain roller um, turned out super nice things work out good so now that I'm done that I'd like you to let me know down in the comments if you like seeing this type of content on the videos like do you want to see machining and welding and such on the bike builds um, the reason I'm showing it is because I just wanted to reveal all the facets to repair that go on behind the scenes um, you know and at the shop sometimes People will have, uh, you know, say some sort of rare engine case has a, a failure, you know, might have to bore out a, a bearing hole, uh, reline it with a steel liner to put it back in. You know, either it's really expensive to get the part or it's unobtainium when it's something vintage and we have to do repairs like that. So I do like showing you guys that stuff and I enjoy doing this type of work. Um, I just don't want to bore you on the video. So if you don't like seeing this stuff on the bike build videos and you want to just see more of the, you know, painted parts and assembly and stuff, uh, just please let me know that in the comments. Um, another thing is too, I realize, you know, a lot of you maybe don't have lathes or machining equipment or welding equipment and stuff, but you know, maybe you're interested, maybe you're not. Um, this little lathe here is the famous Chinese mini lathe. Um, and it is a fantastic little machine. I, I, re I know there's a lot of bad talk about these. Um, people say they're just toys and whatnot. And, and I'm here to tell you that I've done a lot of really nice precision work with this lathe. It cuts really true. I did do the bearing upgrade in here. I put tapered roller bearings in here instead of the ball bearings that it comes with. I upgraded the tool post, but I mean, that's something, the tool post is something you do, any lathe you buy, most lathes don't come with a, when you buy a new, they don't come with a precision tool post, you, you have to add that, they usually have some sort of tool post, but I mean, subject to how much money you spend, of course, but this, uh, you can buy these used for $500 and up, uh, I bought this one new, I paid $1,000 for it. And it's been very well worth the money. I build lots of bushings on bikes, uh, all kinds of stuff. I do internal and external threading with this. Um, so far only in standard or imperial thread, but I am going to order the kit where I can cut metric thread with this. Um, and I do have better lathes. This is not my only lathe. I have two others, uh, bigger and brand name lathes. But I think for the home shop hobbyist, and this is a hobby lathe, let's not get carried away and have any misconceptions that it is a, a you know, a production machine or anything like that. It's a hobby lathe, and if you are gentle with it and take, you know, reasonable cuts for the size of the machine, 
I've seen YouTube videos of guys testing these and jamming 80 thou cuts and stuff and you know smoking the motors and stuff I mean that's ridiculous that you, you would not expect that of this machine uh, if you treat it like a good tool it is a good tool and uh, you know I like I said I, I really enjoy it out here in my garage because it's you know this is my my heated garage in the winter time and I get to come out here after work and on the weekends and play with some of the stuff and sometimes I you know need to do a, a job for work build a little piece or something and uh, you know I have it it's here in the warm warm garage and I enjoy using it so. all right so in closing off the video uh, I'd like to let you know how much we really appreciate you viewing our videos um, we'd love you to give us a thumbs up and please comment and subscribe if you get the opportunity uh, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you on the next one